This is the third in a series of videos on using 3D Slicer for doing segmentation of respiratory architectures in insects. Um, I'll refer you to the previous two videos in this playlist for more background and information. Uh, we're just going to jump right into uh, segmenting out the insect body and the trachea. So from the previous videos, we have the unmasked version of Grilloblata that we masked in the previous one. You actually don't have to do that. I'll get into that a little bit in a second. We have the masked version, uh, which has the vial removed, and we will start with that one. Let's drop that on the slicer so that we have just this volume in here. And that is what was left over from the previous video. Now, the first thing we will do is we will just get the insect body itself um, as sort of our first segment. So we'll go to Segment Editor. Add more segment, call the body, change the color, a little more visible. The first tool that we'll use in the segment editor is the thresholding tool. Threshold basically makes a segment that uh, is within the absorbance values are within a certain range. And you can sort of preview what's going to happen here by scooting up the value here, and you'll see it gets rid of things that are of lower absorbance, which for us is air, um, and everything that's of higher absorbance, which is the body and everything else. Um, there'll be a little bit of noise usually around here. We can clean that up in just a few minutes. So usually what I try and do is tend to use the data probe here, and I move around in the volume, and I see like what's kind of the ballpark values for what the body is, so I'm seeing a low of around, you can also kind of like drag in here. There's a new feature where you can kind of do a local threshold. You can drag a shape inside there and it'll tell you what the values are in there. That's sometimes a decent starting point, sometimes not, because um, it doesn't always necessarily get the cuticle, which tends to be a higher absorbance than the integument. So I'll usually take whatever that says and increase it a little bit. And I can look around here. So these are the values I'm looking at in the lower left corner here. So you can see these hover around 21,000 or less, and then here is around mm, 37,000 or more, give or take, depending on where we are. Up here in the head, it might be a little different. Down here in the abdomen, a little different, but I kind of get a ballpark. And then I'll sort of drag these to where the only thing that seems to be remaining are the tracheal air spaces. And I'll give it a little bit of Maybe you bump it a little bit, and then you hit apply, and then you have a segment that is basically just the body. If we had not done the vial removal, um, we would have the body and the tube on the outside, basically. So that's why we do the vial removal. We can do this kind of in one nice and easy steps. Um, there's a bunch of stuff left over here um, that we can clean up if we need to. You can kind of see what that looks like um, by looking at the 3D view. Now. One of the things that I almost never use in the 3D view is surface smoothing. Surface smoothing takes a lot of CPU time, and it also gets rid of uh, details that might be important for morphology. So I tend to turn that off, speeds things up quite a bit. It takes a second to make the model. And then there it is, that's the body. So as you can see, there's still some packing material in here that we can clean away using various tools that I'll talk about um, in the next video. But this is sort of the first step, is just getting the body, a 3D model of the body. So then in the next video, I'll talk about cleaning this up a little bit. And then in the video after that, I'll talk about getting the trachea segmented out separately.